What's going on guys? Jesse from Pew Review and I wanted to go over some quick things, different types of buffers for ARs. So I got a lot of comments on some of my previous videos, especially with my Bear Creek Arsenal. It's only got a 13 ounce bolt carrier and a lot of people were telling me to just increase the spring rate, put a 308 spring in there, which one you can't do because it's got a proprietary spring. So I would have to find a a smaller spring than what's currently there and run a double spring setup, which I can do, but let me explain some things about different buffers and why spring rate doesn't always mean better. So one, uh, all the spring, most of what the spring is going to do, it's not going to actually delay in a blowback method, the bolt from trying to cycle open. What it will do though, is the spring being stiffer as the bolt starts to come back. Um, it's going to slow the bolt a little bit better as the spring gets put under tension. Uh, and it's going to have a better rebound, which is actually going to help it cycle the next round into the chamber better. Now, where this is a bad thing, if you have a really heavy spring in a short stroke 9mm action, for instance, uh, if the spring is too heavy, and depending on the mass of your bolt, it could make it go so fast that you'll actually have feeding issues so it's a double-sided sword there. Um, if the spring rate is too soft, you could have feeding issues. And if the spring rate is way too high, you can have feeding issues. I've seen both. So in this case, we're going to talk about buffers. Um, in your standard 9 mil, let me show you what I got here. Don't mind the sock. This is my PSA 9 mil. This has a 14 and a half ounce uh, BCG there. And I'm running... This is a 3.05 ounce sliding buffer, and I'll show you why that's important. Uh, and then I made my own little shim here, which fits perfectly in the buffer tube. Yes, it's a bolt with a nut on it, ground down. Don't judge me, it gets the job done. This weighs about two and a half ounces on its own. Uh, so this system uses a smaller spring because of the smaller buffer uh, that way, and it's a flat spring. Um, it's not a super heavy duty spring and this gun runs great. That really short buffer with the really short buffer tube and the reason I ground this the way it is is so I can still get bolt hold open. You see in one of my previous videos if you want to know more about this gun. The point I'm getting at here is uh, the reason I would rather use this than use a standard five or five and a half ounce buffer that's solid. And what I mean by solid buffer, notice... You can hear clicking in there. It's got sliding weights. This is a solid five and a half ounce buffer. So this buffer is the same size as your standard carbine buffer, except it weighs two ounces more. When it comes to nine millimeters or any pistol, pistol caliber carbine, notice there's no locking face on the bolt like you would have in a standard AR. So there's there's nothing to really slow the recoil of this shell popping out of the chamber except for weight and the fact that there's a spring holding that weight on the face of that. So yes, you do need some spring pressure, but spring pressure is not going to actually delay recoil. What's delaying that recoil is the amount of mass that has to be moved. In this case, adding this BCG plus my little 2.5 ounce weight plus my 3 ounce buffer there, roughly a 20 ounce setup so you've got uh, about a one and a quarter ish pounds uh you got one and a quarter pounds of mass that has to be pushed out of the way by that cartridge and what that does is it delays the blowback it's delayed blowback is what it is uh that cartridge goes boom when you pull the trigger there goes the hammer right there hits the back of the cartridge or hits the firing pin hits the cartridge it goes boom and that bullet needs to leave the barrel and pressure needs to dissipate as that round's moving back. Because if the round moves, if that round moves back too fast, you have an out of battery explosion and the cartridge will rupture. That's why weight is so important. It literally just delays that because now that round has to push against all of that weight. So I hope that helps. The reason those sliding weights are so important is, especially in a blowback gun like so, whether it be 22, 9 millimeter, 45 ACP, as that bolt slams back forward and it smacks hardened steel versus hardened steel, it's going to create a bouncing effect. You're going to tink, and if you watch in slow motion, you'll actually have the bolt 
hit and then bounce back a little bit. If it bounces back too hard, it can extract another round. You get a double feed. Um, and I've had that happen in the BCA a couple times. So what this does is it acts like a sliding hammer weight. As it goes back forward and it impacts, that little weight in there gives it that extra pad on the butt to keep it in battery. That um, And that will avoid a couple of things. If you're running full auto with these, uh, you won't have an out of battery boom because what will happen in full auto is it'll bounce, jump out of battery slightly, and then it'll set the round off and you can have an explosion in the chamber. I've seen that happen before. Um, also, if you're trying to shoot binary or just pull the trigger really fast, same concept. You'll have a lot of jams, malfunctions, rounds going off out of battery. It's not what you want. You can lose a finger, lose an eye. Um, so we're trying to avoid that. Uh, a, this is a three ounce buffer. It also has sliding weights in it. That's just for your standard AR. Um, but different buffer weights, that's how you control your recoil. The spring does matter if you're having feeding problems and depending on the gun that you're rocking. Uh, but the spring is significantly less important the rule of thumb typically is to try to run a standard spring with the best buffer combination. So I try to run standard mil spec springs, one because they're on a shelf everywhere in every gun store. Um, so they're easy to come by. And now you're just trying to tune the buffer. Weight is what makes these things operate so well. So the rule of thumb with a nine millimeter is it has to be roughly 16 to 20 ounces. Some people are running 30 ounce setups out there and that's fine, but that's a lot of reciprocating mass. Um, but some people like it. Me, I think 20 to 22 ounces is really good. This is roughly 19 and a half to 20 ounces. But anyways, I hope that explains some stuff. Buffer weights, uh, that also, if you saw some of my videos about BCA and the issues I'm having, it's running a 13 ounce bolt with no buffer um, so 13 ounces only very lean very underweight for a nine millimeter um, and because you don't have that sliding weight uh, you're getting i'm sure you're getting a significant amount of bolt bounce out of the bca and that's why i had so many double feeds and issues with that running anything over 115 grain and also having out of battery explosions um, with higher pressure loads so there you go direct blowback no locking mechanism. You need a lot of mass to allow dwell time, allow that pressure to drop in the chamber. Because basically, as soon as you pull the trigger, as soon as that round goes off, this bolt's already starting to move back. So it's already building up pressure in the sides of that cartridge. So all you're trying to do is delay that as long as possible. And spring weight's not going to matter. The only thing that's going to matter in that case is mass and a lot of it. So I think 45, roughly one and a half pounds, if not more. So there you go. Hope that helps. Hope I helped you learn something.